at that point. Okay, so that should be uh, that should be pretty clear. Where is my eraser? Where's my eraser? Here it is. All right. The next point. The next point is um, three problems in defining terrorism. In an analysis and a discussion of terrorism, it's important, and the way that I'll try to present the information is not simply assuming that there is this thing, terrorism, right? Um, there's a lot of jargon, there's a lot of, there's a lot of problems, semantic, conceptual, logistic problems in talking about terrorism, because terrorism as such isn't something that is quantifiable or tangible. The effects of terrorism are quantifiable and tangible, but terrorism as a structure is a conceptual, ideological um, um, construct, right? It's not a physical um, construct, so that we can say that the ideology of terror um, influences tangible effects within the world, but terrorism as a concept transcends quantification, right? It's a concept, it's an ideology, um, and it's this fact that has academia in a bit of a debate, and um, I'm a good sophist, so I just play the middle ground, right? There are some academics who argue that terrorism is um, an actual structure that influences um, terrorist effects in the world. Other people say that terrorism really has no existence as such, and the evocation to evoke terrorism is simply a political tool, a ploy to, to manipulate international, um, uh, international relations and international diplomacy. Um, I think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of both at times, uh, and I try to stay away from sort of the polemic discourse between terrorism exists, terrorism does not, and so on. However, there are problems, and um, Crenshaw defines at least three problems in defining terrorism. Right. So this will be three problems in defining all right. Three problems in defining terrorism. The first problem in an attempt to define terrorism, and this uh, comes from uh, Crenshaw herself in a 1994 um, uh, piece that she wrote called Organi Organized Disorder, Terrorism, Politics, and Society. Um, objectivity is complicated by the pejorative nature of the term, right? So objectivity is difficult. O-B-J-E-C-T-I-V-I-T. Objectivity is difficult. Being objective in discussing terrorism is is difficult because, as, as uh, Crenshaw says, the pejorative nature of the term. The pejorative nature of the term is that when we say terrorist, right, when you say terrorism, what we're doing in sort of a semiological sense is we're attaching a label, right, attaching a label to an act. Or, if it's the individual, we're attaching a label to the person so that the person who participates in a terrorist act, so we have terrorist act, Right? We have terrorist act, and we have the individual. The individual who commits a terrorist act is therefore, because of his or her participation in the act, labeled a terrorist. Right? The person is labeled a terrorist because of his or her participation in a terrorist act. So that by committing an act of terrorism, the individual is then labeled a, a terrorist. So now this person is identified as terrorist, right? Um, the problem with defining this individual as a terrorist for a number of sort of reasons, and this is not to say that there aren't terrorists, right? There are obviously terrorists. But the uniform blanket labeling of an individual who participates in a terrorist act as a terrorist um, is problematic because the pejorative nature, the negative nature, the negative context of saying terrorist, as soon as you evoke terrorist on an individual and then say that this individual is a terrorist, what ends up happening is that objectivity becomes blurred, right? Um, it's, it's for this reason why um, the United States of America got into so much heat in an in international discussion once um, the, the, the treatment of Guantanamo detainees surfaced, right? Um, and, and not really in fairness to the, the U.S. government, but just so that you understand, not, not in an attempt to try and explain or justify the act. Once an individual receives the label of terrorist, right, 
you have to ask yourself, does the appropriation of this label, terrorist, result in the dehumanization of the individual? Right? Does the appropriation of the label, terrorist, to the individual result in the individual's dehumanization? And I think um, it's not just yes or just no. I think in certain circumstances, having the label that I am a terrorist will, under, circumstance, under circumstances, certain circumstances, result in my dehumanization as a person. In other circumstances, it doesn't really dehumanize the individual um, within a sort of policy-based, military-based um, uh, structure, right? Um, so there's argument about this, right? There's uh, contemporarily um, theorists, uh, writers, IR people, conflict resolutionists are in debate about the appropriation of the title terrorist to the individual, and does that appropriation result in the dehumanization of the individual? If the appropriation of terrorists to the individual results in the individual's dehumanization, then it's no surprise that Guantanamo is in effect. It's no surprise that uh, POWs are tortured and, um, and, and uh, enhanced interrogation is used, right? on these detainees because they're not like me. I go home to my wife and my kids and my dog. This person is only, um, this person is only bent on the destruction of my state, whatever that state might be, right? And this is not just with respect to U.S. politics. This has to do with, with any state, right? The appropriation of terrorists to any individual within any state functions. The question is, does it function to dehumanize the individual, right? So objectivity becomes blurred in using um, the term, the appropriation of the term terrorist to the individual. Why? Because then by default we can do whatever we want to that individual because that individual deserves to be tortured or, or abused or killed or what have you. Right? So that's one problem. Right? Again, as I'm saying, uh, my, my point in the lecture is to remain as objective as possible, give arguments for, give arguments against, and really leave it to you uh, to decide. More than anything, um, what's of interest to me is a complete and thorough understanding of the concept and the complexity of the concept because it isn't this sort of very simple, easily digestible uh, notion that is the idea of terrorism and even more complicated is the greater notion of uh, international war. Now, the second point is that the concept of terrorism is not tied to any specific ideology, right? So it's not ideological not ideologically fixed, right? Talking about terrorism is not um, ideologically fixed, right? Timothy McVeigh was a terrorist. He wasn't Muslim, to my knowledge. Um, Al-Qaeda is a terrorist organization, um, and they weren't a um, Christian organization, right? So you can be, there are Christian terrorists, there are Muslim terrorists, there are um, all forms, all manners of terrorism, right? Terrorism as such isn't fixed to any particular ideology. In credit to um, those who support the concept of terrorism, the only conceptual uh, continuity, despite whoever is committing the um, terrorist act, between individuals is the idea that terrorism is used to elicit terror. Right? The whole point of terrorism, by definition, is to cause, as an effect, terror. Right? It is to cause terror within a population of people. Right? So if an individual hears that in traveling overseas a journalist was beheaded, it might, um, and it does, discourage journalists from going to that particular region and covering, um, covering uh, the atrocities that might be happening, or uncovering some of the um, disparities in, in, in power relations that might be happening, right? If so-and-so was beheaded, I might be beheaded as well. I'm not going to go over there, right? Similarly, um, post 9-11 attacks in the United States, people are more terrified, right? More terrified of people who don't look like the quote-unquote average American, right? Which, which in itself is problematic, right? What ends up happening is that this the, one of the main effects, right, if not the main effect, um, Midlarsky and um, Crenshaw don't discuss this in, in the chapter, but obviously I'm going to add to um, their analysis, otherwise I'm just doing a synopsis. But obviously one of the main effects 
of terrorism is the increase of xenophobia. X E N O P H O B I A phobia. I think I spelled that right. Xenophobia, right? And the idea of xenophobia, if I spell it right, is um, fear of strangers, right, or foreigners. Fear of strangers, fear of foreigners. 